Welcome back. I'm Linda Kincaid. Good to have you with us. Well, after weeks of mounting pressure, Luis Rubiales has resigned as president of Spain's Football Federation. Calls for his resignation had grown louder over that unwanted kiss that he gave star player Jennifer Hermoso as Spain celebrated its Women's World Cup victory. Rubiales has vowed to clear his name following what he called excessive persecution. And just hours after he quit, Spain's football club honored Hermoso in her first match since that World Cup victory. Mexico also paid the football star an emotional tribute in front of a supportive crowd at Hidalgo Stadium. Well, I want to bring in CNN's World Sports. Don Riddell for more on all of this. Good to see you, Don. So the legal troubles are certainly building for Rubiales. He finally stepped down, but he's still not conceding any wrongdoing. Yeah, it's fascinating, Linda. The uh, equality minister in Spain uh, said it's over, but I wonder if it really is over, and we can look at that in so many different ways. You mentioned his legal troubles. Just last week on Friday, uh, the national prosecutor in Spain uh, filed a complaint regarding the crime of sexual assault. Then we must wonder how the players feel about this. Their next game is going to be in just, what, 11 days' time on the 22nd of September. Remember, they had said that they wouldn't play for the national team whilst the leaders remained in place. So Rubiales has now gone. Uh, Jorge Vilda, the coach who they already had issues with, was fired last week. But what about the Spanish Football Federation, who during the last three weeks had stood by Rubiales, who had released two statements on the subject, threatening legal action against Jenny Hermoso for, quote, spreading lies. So is this going to be enough to tempt the players back to come back and represent the national team? And, of course, this coming just three weeks after the biggest triumph they possibly could have imagined, winning uh, the World Cup, beating England in the final in Sydney, Australia. It is just an absolutely extraordinary story. And, again, we look at Rubiales and what he's saying about it. He's made numerous statements over the last few weeks. He, of course, spoke for half an hour uh, on an occasion where many people thought he was going to quit, and he didn't. And whilst he has apologized, many people would say that he lacks contrition. And as you say, he is vowing to clear his name. He's talking about excessive persecution and many falsehoods. So is it over? I think from his perspective, certainly not. Yeah, he certainly has uh, many more challenges ahead. Uh, I'll have to leave it there, Don. Mm. We are going to stay on this story. Uh, Don Riddell, thanks so much. We've got La Liga TV football broadcast journalist Semra Hunter, who has been following this story closely and joins us live. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so we've spoken quite a few times in the past few weeks as this <laughs> pressure for Rubiales uh, to quit, to resign, has only continued to build. Why now? Why has he finally stepped down? Well, one of the reasons that he cited in an interview that he gave in English, actually, with Piers Morgan, was that it was down to his daughters. It was a conversation that he had with them, with his father, where they said to him, at this stage, it really is about preserving a bit of dignity and trying to avoid further damage and harm that's already been caused. And now it's about trying to... Um, really focus on the future. Of course, uh, we were talking about there just a moment ago, the fact that he has a court case, a criminal court case now that he has to worry about. And so his whole focus now is about trying to clear his name, about trying to restore his reputation, about trying to defend what he calls as his innocence. He says that he believes in the truth. He says he believes in faith. So I think it was them who were, who really, or they who really managed to, to Get him to see the light, to see the writing on the wall, that there really was no other choice at this point in time. And I think the real tipping point was Jenny Hermoso filing that official complaint. And that had to happen in order for the investigation to continue in the criminal courts. And there could be very serious consequences and repercussions if, in fact, he is found guilty. So the fact that he lost all of his allies, everyone turned their back on him. He really became an isolated man. He was all alone. And there was unsurmountable pressure coming from Spanish society and abroad as well. So I think he finally realized, even though he wants to go gung ha about this, he wants to fight into the bitter end, which has always been his consistent um, statement, really, across the board for the last three weeks. I think, unwittingly, he's decided, OK, I have no other choice but to stand down, even if he doesn't really want to. 
And Samra, he wasn't the only one to be forced out. The coach, Coach Vilda, mm. whose actions have also been criticised, was forced to resign. He, of course, uh, appeared to grab the breast of an assistant coach at that Women's World Cup final. That assistant coach has now been named as the coach. Mm -hmm. has, has she spoken up about this at all? No, she really hasn't said anything about it at all. And I imagine it's because she's watching everything unfold and the fact that she's just been appointed to the job. And there's also been uh, quite a lot of criticism about that as well. There's not a lot of people who really see this as the right appointment. On the one hand, it's brilliant that you have a woman who takes up the role. It's never happened before in the 42 years of the women's national team history. There's only ever been three men in the post prior to this. But people who know her, even previous Spanish national team players such as Vero Boquete have been very vocal about this and they've said listen she doesn't have a lot of experience she's really not qualified for the role and on top of that it's just a continuation of what was already there you pointed out she's the assistant of Jorge Vilda but she's been in that role for the last five years since 2018 so in terms of philosophy methodologies and so on it really is just staying very much in the same vein as, as before. So there really isn't too much change, which is what these women have been asking for. Mm. They weren't asking for a woman to take over necessarily. What they wanted was someone who was qualified for the job, who has the know-how, who has the knowledge to lead a team of this caliber, now currently the best team in the world after winning the World Cup. So I imagine it's probably a bit of an overwhelming situation for Monse Tomei, the new coach, and she's probably just kind of biding her time to see how this all goes down to see what the reaction is, because the players themselves, she was appointed a week ago, they still haven't said anything. So we don't really know how they feel about this appointment. And we don't know if the removal of Jorge Valda, along with the uh, resignation of Luis Rubiales, if that's going to be enough to sway them to come back and play now for Monte Tome, or if in fact they want to continue to dig their heels even further and demand more changes, because quite frankly, it just might be now or never. Yeah, and I have to ask you what, what it's going to take to see a bigger cultural shift because it wasn't just about mm. that unwelcome kiss on Jenny Hermoso. There's a long list of complaints, right? Absolutely. I mean, they've been talking for many, many years now about a whole ecosystem that has been in place that has been incredibly toxic all the way from the top down to the bottom. So it's a systemic issue. It's not just about one person or two people. It's about a whole group of people who have been running the show. And I think a lot of the concerns for people now is that still within the Federation are those who have been either previous allies of Luis Rubiales, at least publicly, privately perhaps they still are, but publicly they have now turned their backs. But people still say, listen, these are the masterminds. These are the people that have been calling the shots that also think like Rubiales. So how are we going to be able to change things if the same people are still in those positions? And so that's why I say I wonder what the players are going to do if they're going to stand firm on not returning to play for Spain until there's a proper clear out or if they feel as though this is enough. Because if you listen to those who have been vocal about this, they'll tell you it isn't enough. There still has to be more change implemented here because effectively just by removing one piece or two, not a whole lot changes. And there's only been cosmetic changes up until this point. So people are still demanding that there are systemic changes within the institution, not just in wider society, but within the football world, even within the media as well. There's still a lot of pressure on the Federation to really make good on these promises that they have now put forward and shared with the world that they are going to be making these wholesale changes, but have yet to do so. So it'll be very fascinating to see how this does play out uh, in the coming weeks and months, especially now as they have to have elections at some point to vote in a new president. Yeah, exactly. We will continue to follow it. Samra Hunter, always good to get your perspective from La Liga TV. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Well, still to come, a desperate search in Morocco for survivors following Friday's earthquake. Right now, time is the biggest enemy. We'll have a look at the rescue efforts when we come back.